morning, guys. It's Amy White with Worthy Written Words. Today, we're going to be working on a layout that I did in my Deseret Book of Mormon. It's this page with the honeycombs. This particular paperclip bookmark is sold out, and so we're going to take that out, and we're just going to focus on what you're going to get in your actual page kit. So this is what it looks like in my Deseret Book of Mormon, and this is what the kit is going to look like when it comes to you. First on the cover is a sticker so you know what the final layout can look like. The inside comes with a sticker sheet, some washi tape, and a honeycomb stencil. This is my line upon line Book of Mormon that we're going to recreate this page in today. You want chapter 2, verse 3 of Ether. To protect the pages from having paint lead through, we're going to first use some gesso that's clear, I like the tube kind, and we're going to apply it all over our page just with a foam brush or a paintbrush, and this is going to help protect it. I like to also put something behind the page. It could be scrap paper, or in this case I have a uh, Ranger craft mat, and um, you just apply the gesso all over and you want to make sure that it's spread evenly without thick brush strokes showing. Once you get a clear application all over your page then we're going to go ahead and we're going to dry it. Using my Heat It Ranger craft tool I'm going to blast the page just like a blow dryer where I'm moving it frequently so I don't get any yellow spots from burning the page if I leave it in one spot too long. So it takes maybe about two minutes of applying this heat tool for it to dry out and then you're ready to move on. Okay, now that the page is dry, I'm gonna grab my stencil and a pencil and we're gonna go to work. The reason I'm using a pencil while tracing this honeycomb is so that occasionally I can pick the honeycomb stencil up and see where I'm placing these honeycombs and I'm not doing it with any sort of pattern I'm just randomly choosing which ones to fill in so I pick it up check it out if I like it I'm going to add others I can erase others um, and so it's nice to have that option to erase if you don't like what you've done so what I am doing is a small the smallest patch in the top left corner of the page a medium patch on the top right corner of the page and the largest patch on the bottom of the page. Um, and in this particular case it ends up that the the bottom and the top right are about the same size but if you want you can make it you know small, medium, and large for visual interest. And I kept it to the corners and you definitely need to leave space along the right side of the margin for your journaling at the end. Then I'm going to go over, once I like it, with this Jelly Roll black pen. So if you feel confident enough, you can skip the step with the pencil and just do the Jelly Roll, but I like to do the pencil first to make sure I like the design. And you're going to cover the whole thing that you've done with the Jelly Roll pen. And then when you're done with that and it's dry, you're going to go over and erase it and get rid of all of the original pencil marks. If you forget to erase and you paint, then those pencil marks will not be removable at that point. So it's important you don't forget to erase them. After erasing, I take the Jelly Roll pen and I add a second line to some of the honeycombs on purpose. As you can see here, and it gives it a doodle look. And it's also good for if you've messed up somewhere. It's really forgiving. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the rest of this for the whole page. Now that the outlining is done, we can start to paint. Using a watercolor brush pen and these Kiritake Gonzai Tombi watercolors. I'll have all of the supplies listed in the links below. We only use three colors for this layout, and we're gonna start with this light brown one first. So I'm gonna start by putting this light brown all around the hexagons of the honeycomb. As I'm starting this one off, it's really light. It looks almost yellow, 
and so I get more paint on my brush and you can see this next time it's a lot darker. So the rule is if you want it lighter you use less paint and more water and then darker would be more paint less water. It's pretty forgiving and you don't have to worry about being super accurate. If you feel like some of it is too light you can always do another layer over it and make it darker. And also if it's too dark, you can go and lift some of the color up with a wet brush and it'll make it lighter. Also, if you happen to go inside the hexagon with the brown, it's not a big deal. The yellow and brown will blend well and it won't show at all. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm also starting from the left and moving my way right because I'm right-handed. If you are left-handed, you'll want to start from the right and move your way left so that you don't smudge it as you are painting. Okay, now that you know what to do for this step, let's move ahead to the next part. Now we're going to color in the hexagons with this golden yellow color. And if you don't have these exact watercolors, any will do as long as you're using yellow and light brown and a blue color. That's really all you need. Not everyone is colored in yellow. Every once in a while, I choose this light brown one and I color it in brown just like I did around the hexagons. In fact, I'm going to take a break from the yellow and just do brown so that I don't forget as it gets further along. And there's no rhyme or reason to which ones I choose to do brown, I just pick random ones. The majority should be yellow and with a few brown ones thrown in. When I'm done choosing brown ones, then I'm going to go back and fill the rest in yellow, working my way from left to right again. Okay, you get the idea. So once you get that all filled in, I have realized a mistake. I forgot to cover my verse with washi tape and so these honeycombs are on top of it. If you look in the Deseret book, the honeycombs are behind the verse, with the verse on top. So what I'm going to do now is cover it with washi tape, just a random roll that you might not like. I'm gonna cover the verse, the rest of it up so that I don't fill it all in with blue. This is actually something I forget to do a lot. So this should have been done right after you were done gessoing your page. But I think I caught it in enough time that it'll be okay with the honeycomb sitting on top of the verse. And it might even be a cool effect that you like better than just having the white box. So this is gonna protect any paint from getting in underneath and you can use this for any wet media that you use, acrylics, watercolors, gessos, whatever you want to use. This method will protect your verse and keep it white and pop it out on the page. Okay, that'll work. Now to cover the rest in blue. I'm going to use my watercolors and I'm going to use this one right there. And this is going to end up being a lot lighter than what I did in my Deseret book page. I want to be able to read the words a little bit better and 
um, to see what it'll look like instead of being as dark. These watercolors are super vibrant, and so they will uh, leave a lot of color on your page. And they even have like a shiny gloss to them, which is really pretty. I'm going to just keep adding watercolor to the rest of this page. And it's going to be a lot of water, a little bit of paint. And then if I get a lot of paint that stands out, I'll just kind of blend it and add a little, little bit more water to it. And, and just be really careful around the sides of the hexagons. Occasionally I'm drying it with the heat tool just so that I don't smudge it and I'm adding another layer in certain places just to give it a little more depth and a little more color including the honeycombs. I'm adding another layer and some of the browns to darken it up as well as some of the yellows. Now that I'm done with that I'm going to go back with the jelly roll pen and outline the outside of the hexagon to help it pop off the page. And I'm also going over some of the lines inside the hexagons that got covered with the yellow paint or the brown paint just to help them pop out again. This step could be done before you do the blue or after. Either way, it really doesn't matter. When that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and rip off this washi tape. And I'm going to go in and fill in the honeycomb and I'm also gonna outline the verse around the blue with the pen. Now there's a part where the paint has come underneath the washi tape into my white box. And it's really easy to fix. You take your paintbrush with just water on it, no color, and go over it and it'll lift the color right off the page. That's what I'm doing there. I decided I want to make a little bit more depth in these honeycombs. So I'm going back over some of the yellows, not all of them, but just some, and putting another coat of yellow paint. And then I'm doing the same thing with all of the browns to make them stand out a little bit more. Having some light yellows and then dark yellows adds more visual interest than all of them being the exact same shade. I'm going to use this white pen. I love it so much. It's a uniball and I'll have the link below on where you can get those. And I'm going to go and add white lines and it's really random. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm mainly focusing on areas where there aren't words and I'm adding um, small lines, uh, long lines, there's, it's really just whatever you want to do. And I'm not adding it to all of them, but I add it to a lot. And uh, it just adds a little bit of pop to the page. I definitely add it to all the browns because it really stands out. Using pens on top of watercolors can get your pen a little junky. And if that happens, uh, just roll the pen on a scrap piece of paper and it'll free up any of the paint that it might have picked up. And uh, just be careful if there's too many layers of watercolor. Depending on what pen you're using, it could be harder to get ink to show up. And it could ruin the pen. Next, we're going to do the stickers. I am not going to lie. These stickers are not very user-friendly. And it doesn't help that I am doing this with fake nails on that aren't very good at getting into small little places. But if you're really careful, then you can peel them off and peel the inside of the wings off and figure out where you wanna put them. Now, 
I've added extra stickers, extra, like more than you need of the small and the big bees so that if you do have trouble with them, then you can have extras. But even in doing this, I did end up ripping the wings and it really isn't a big deal. I just left it even with the, the wing ripped and it just goes right back together on the page and you can't even tell. So the bees are okay. Um, the really, really tricky one is the Deseret at the bottom. It's really fragile. Um, and I think this was my first attempt at making stickers and I feel like I chose a really, a really tough subject with it being so small and delicate lines um, that in the future I need to just make them more bulky. But um, hopefully you can get it figured out. Uh, I've done it on a few layouts, and this is actually the hardest time that I've had doing them for this layout, and it might just be the nails. I don't know. But anyways, I try and put them where there aren't any words, so you're not covering them up, and I put them in different directions, and I I just like to have the one queen bee with her little ser servant bees around her. And then to get the Deseret off, I start at the bottom and I work my way along the entire bottom with all the letters, peeling them up. And then I work on peeling them around the top. The problem is sometimes it gets stuck and when you try and pull it off, it'll rip the sticker. So you just have to go really slow and really patient in order to lift it off carefully. And maybe you need to get scissors. That's probably what I should have done. Um, I got the word off, but it did rip in a couple places, and you'll see that here in a second when I put it down on the page. But it's not a big deal. Um, I'll show you what I ended up doing, because I'm trying to get the inserts out of the D. I place it on the page. I start off putting it down too low, so I have to lift it back up and put it up higher. And you can see there's a hole there in the D and the S. And it's not a big deal. I just pull them off and stick them on separately. If that bothers you, if you ripped your letters, let me know, and I can send you a printable file of it. Um, so what I'm actually doing here is just cutting it because I can't with my sick nails get it. And then I'm sticking it on. And then I decide after I stick it on that I'm going to go over it with a glaze pen. They are my favorite pens in the whole world. That's a glaze pen. And I'm going to go around it just to kind of seal it around the edges since I had some little breaks in there. Not necessary, but I just wanted to give that a shot. And it makes it bolder, and the ink actually is 3D, and so it pops up off the page. Okay, now those bees are a little bit see-through, and so I'm going to go over it with a yellow glaze just to make the stripes look more yellow instead of green. Totally not needed. I just had the pen right there, so why not? Next, I get a light board and a piece of lined paper and I stick it underneath and that way, when you go to do your journaling, you have lines to make sure you're writing straight. You don't have to do this, but it's just a little hack if you're concerned about, you know, your handwriting. And I always start in pencil, always, because I put the wrong words down, I misspell things, I run out of room and I have to readjust. So it's always good to write it out in pencil first, get it how you want it and then go back over it in your, your black um, jelly roll pen. And if I've ever said gesso pen, I mean jelly roll pen. I tend to swap those words sometimes on accident, but it's a jelly roll pen. And I'm just gonna go over the pencil in this pen and then do the same thing I did before after it's dry so you don't smudge it. So I dried it right there. I'm gonna erase the pencil 
And then you have these washi tape that comes in your kit. You can put them on your page somewhere. Um, because the line upon line doesn't have a lot of room, I'm going to actually put it on a paper clip. And any paper clip will do. I'm using a gold one, a jumbo one. And I'm going to tape it to itself and then cut a little flag out of it and use it as a little chunky thing at the top of my page. There's all sorts of things you can do with washi tape. Um, if you have more room at the top of your page, you could just put a strip of washi tape at the top and it adds a nice little decorative touch. It all depends on what kind of journaling edition you are working with. So you can see it makes a fun little bookmark. I'm going to add one more step just for decoration. This is also good to do if you have stuff dangling down from your paperclip bookmarks that helps them from sliding off of the paperclip. I'm going to just wrap it around the inner part of the clip. And it just folds in and tapes to itself. And then I'm going to cut off the extra. And it just makes a little decorative part. Ta-da! And once it dries, it won't curl like that. It'll lay flat. But that's what it looks like when you're all done. Thanks for watching.